So in a previous tip, we had a look at how we could use a particular mapping service that enabled us to grab an image that didn't have any labels on it for a nice clean look as part of some maybe urban planning or massing exercises in Revit. In this tip, I just want to focus on the process of getting the image that you captured and applying it to the topography so that we can use it as reference to start doing those massings. So to start with, we need to go ahead and grab the image that we've downloaded out of this service or any other service uh, for that matter. So coming up to the image tool and grabbing the image file that we've downloaded and opening it up and placing it into the project space. Now this image is not going to be scaled correctly so we need to do first uh, do that to the image. So selecting it and then using the resize or scale button. Um, I know in this particular case that the distance across the back side of this building here is, is about 83 meters so that's exactly what I'm going to put in to scale it. I'm just going to quickly just reposition this back into the middle because this uh, block of land that we see here in the middle is, is the focus of my massing exercise. Now, now that we have that in place, you'll notice when we go to our 3D view that we don't have the image available, okay? Because images are only visible in, in the view in which they're placed. So what we need to do is place a topography over the top of it. So come up to massing and site, grabbing the topo surface tool, and you can see here we can actually snap to the corners of that image. I'm going to leave the elevation set to zero and just place some points at every corner on the image and finish the topo surface off. Now the image that's underneath we can tab it through to. Uh, you can see there down on the status bar on the tooltip that I have the uh, image highlighted and I can now grab it. I'm just going to drag it off to the right hand side for the moment. Okay. So what we need to do is create a Revit material that has an appearance asset with the image attached to it so that we can apply, essentially apply this image over onto this topography, which is obviously now visible in the 3D space. So going to our materials, okay, going to generate a brand new material. I'll just pull this over to the middle a bit. And let's uh, let's rename this. Let's call it uh, Topo uh, Sat. Oops, Satellite. Uh, after we rename it, we should probably check the appearance asset. Uh, it's still referring to the generic asset, so we're going to duplicate it as well and give that maybe the same name, uh, Topo Satellite, like so. Uh, we don't need this other information down here, so I'm just going to just strip that out of the material. Now. This material needs to have the image applied to it. So I'm going to select in the image field. Okay, going and grabbing my image, opening it up. And just for the moment, let's just accept all the defaults, hit OK, select the topography and apply that Revit material to the material parameter for that topography. So there we have it. Let's hit OK. All right. Now, because it's a, an image, the only way that we can see it is if we set our visual style to realistic. All right, so there it is. Now, it doesn't look right because it hasn't been scaled correctly. You can see if we zoom all the way in that it is tiny. Okay, so it's being tiled at a very small scale. So we need to go ahead and correct that. And that is what we still, or why we still have this image uh, visible over on the right hand side. Because what we can now do is grab our measure command and we can snap to the corners of that image. You'll notice we can't do it to the topography, but we can to the image. So I'm going to select and measure across the back side, okay, the longest length, and I'm going to use the field up in the options bar to literally copy that exact value. All right, so we're going to go back into the material, and there is a little bit of back and forth here, but uh, it does give us the result we want. So with the topo uh, still selected, we're going to go to its appearance asset, and now selecting the image, will bring up the texture editor. And we have a scale sample size down here that we can adjust. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uncheck this aspect ratio lock button so it's now not active. And I'm going to put that first value into that first field. You can see there it's gotten quite long, but we're now going to hit done, hit OK, and we're going to get a measurement of that 
are the shorter side now. Once again, grab that value, copy it, back into the materials, back into the appearance, into its properties, and we'll plug that value into that field. Okay, so that now at least gives us something, whoops, let's try that again, there we go. It gives us something that's correctly scaled. It may or may not look correct still, but let's just see how it looks. Okay, so not looking too bad. You'll notice here that the image doesn't quite look right. It's actually mirrored. So when you compare the, uh, the texture that's been applied to the image on the right hand side, you can tell it is actually flipped over. So what you need to do is go ahead and edit this source image and literally just mirror it over so that you've got a reverse of it and save it as such. And then what we're going to do, we're going to come back into the materials again. And just to continue this, this refinement process, uh, whoops, uh, we're actually going to select the image, not the, uh, not the button above it, but the image label here. And you can see here, I've got one pre-made already. It's called reverse. We're going to open it. Okay. Done. And okay. And you can see there, uh, it is the correct layout. It just needs to be rotated into position. So we can see here over on the right hand side, we've got this little group of shops here that are sort of facing in the, in the north direction. Whereas in this one, they're facing to the east. So we just need to rotate it 90 degrees. So once more, I'm going to come back into the materials, into the appearance, uh, back into the properties. And we've got a rotational value here. I'm just going to put in 90 degrees. Done. Okay. And there we have it. We actually now have the image looking, should be exactly the same as what was in that source image file. Now, there's just a couple of other little things that you could possibly do as part of this process. Firstly, the brightness of the image can be a problem. So you can see here, it's a little bit lighter than the image that it came from. And in 3D, uh, once again, if I just toggle on the realistic visual style here, you can see there it's completely washed out and that's due to the lighting that's actually in this scene. So what I'm going to do is go back into the materials. Okay. Uh, and we can see here that we have an image fade parameter that's currently set up to 100%. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop this down to a lower value. Somewhere around the 80 mark should start getting it in the ballpark. I'm just going to drop a little lower. You can see there the brightness of that image on that top O is now uh, correcting itself a bit better. So it's, uh, we can see it a lot easier. So that's one way we can adjust it. The second way we can adjust it, you can see here back in the plan view that it's gone a lot darker, is actually back down inside the graphic display options. So in here, you can see that underneath the lighting that we have uh, quite a bright light. If I bring that down to maybe something like 50, um, you know, it's dropped this down a little bit. But the ambient light in this case is set down to zero. So I'm going to bring this up to about 30. You can see there it's going to brighten it back up again maybe 25 in this case, and I'm going to set the shadows the same, uh, might actually be the right set of parameters. So it's now a matter of just tweaking the graphic display options with the lighting and also back inside the materials, just adjusting that, that image fade parameter until you get a nice balance uh, between plan view and also the 3D view. And you can see there, I've actually got something that looks, looks reasonably good. And the last thing that you might want to do just to enhance the topography before you even start massing is possibly just putting on a subregion or two. Okay, so using the subregion tool, and if I, if I do this quite roughly, I'm just gonna just put a couple of bounding lines around the entire site. Uh, let's see, something like, like that, nice and rough. All right, when we hit the finish button, that now becomes a region that sits over the top of the topography. And this subregion, you can now assign whatever material you want to it. So if I grab the site sand material in this case, I get a nice sort of olivey kind of representation, which is now going to show me that's my block of land that I need to start massing on. So hopefully that'll get you going with some, some really tidy conceptual site-based work for those concept drawings.